Hello guys and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be covering the main points of the keynote speech of Intel on the CES 2021 and we're going to go through all the main announcement, what they brought this year and what they're going to bring next. All right, let's go get started. The 2021 Consumer Electronics Show kicked off today and Intel is out with major new processor technology announcements across virtually all core markets it serves business, education, mobile, gaming and the data center. So let's go ahead and break down what company has unveiled for CES 2021, starting with the introduction of what is expected to make the biggest impact in the market. Shipping in the first half of 2021, Intel is launching a new power band for its Tiger Lake 11th generation core series platform CPUs. This new 35 watt power envelope for Tiger Lake will offer significant uplifting performance for thin and light laptops. Along with the PCIe Gen 4, Intel's latest integrated Iris XE graphics engine and IO connectivity featuring Thunderbolt 4 as well as Wi-Fi 6 with a top turbo boost of 5 GHz, Intel is specifically comparing their H-series single-threaded performance versus AMD's Zen 2-based Ryzen 4000 series mobile processors, claiming roughly 30% performance advantage. We're gonna see what AMD has to say about it tomorrow at their keynote show. But meanwhile, Intel notes that more than 40 designs are on the go, from major OEM like Acer, Asus, Dell, HP, MSI, which all have announced their products from CES 2021 as well. And finally, capping off its high-performance Tiger Lake mobile platform, Intel has announced an 8-core processor for mobile with a full 20 lens of PCIe Gen 4 connectivity and the clock speeds up to 5 GHz. There's not many details about it yet, but it's definitely gonna be something worth checking out later. And if AMD won't be able to produce as many processors as needed, I think many people will choose Intel because if there's nothing else to choose, well, you gotta buy what you can get, right? So yeah, this is pretty good. We got a quite a few different mobile processors, Gen 11. So right now let's go ahead and move to the desktop processors. See what they have presented for the desktop. For the desktop, Intel demonstrated 11th Gen Core S series desktop processor technology, codename Rocket Lake S. Rocket Lake S is actually a 14 nanometer backport of Intel's 10 nanometer Ice Lake architecture combined with Tiger Lake XE LP graphics. I think it's a smart move for the company before they finally able to start making their high-end desktop architecture on a 10 nanometer super thin fab process later this year. The new 8-core Core i9-11900K with a turbo up to 5.3 GHz, which is pretty good, with an all-core boost clock of 4.8 GHz, Intel claims to deliver up to 19% IPC lift over the company's 10th generation Comet Lake S CPUs along with up to 50% higher integrated graphics performance and 20 PCIe 4.0 lanes direct off the CPU root for Gen 4 SSDs and discrete PCIe 4 GPU support. The processor will also be backwards compatible with the 400 series chipset motherboards, though Intel is highlighting new 500 series chipset motherboards with integrated USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 connectivity for 20 gigabyte per second. It's actually interesting to see how this chip performs and Intel is drawing comparison versus AMD's powerful Ryzen 9 5900X. 12 core CPU in gaming workloads and it's getting about 2 to 8 percent lead over AMD's Zen 3 core CPU architecture which is a really bold claim but we're gonna have to check it out once we see the actual benchmark from people testing it on their machines. Although in creator workloads with a 4 core 8 thread advantage Ryzen 9 will most likely be the Core i9-11900K though core for core it should be faster because of their 19% IPC lift. Intel also announced that its vPro platform technologies will be powered by Tiger Lake, now as well in the form of four new 11th generation Intel Core vPro processors. All of these new CPUs are quad-core 8-thread and the chips will boost to a max of 4.8 GHz for the high-end Core i7-11850G7 and to 4.2 GHz for the mid-range Core i5 1140G7. The new vPro platform will support LPDDR4X RAM, speeds up to 4266 MHz, and higher end 11th generation Core vPro processors will operate at 12 to 28 Watt and with the lower end tier operating from 7 to 15 Watt. And they're all gonna be designed to power thin and light laptops. 
Intel will also be boosting up Chromebook performance with its 11th generation core processor technology later this year based on Tiger Lake, including the introduction of an Intel Evo platform based Chromebook. These solutions will bring with them not only Thunderbolt connectivity for the first time in a Chromebook, but also a new Intel visual sensing tech that will allow the machine to detect user presence, waking the display automatically. And finally, Intel introduced new Pentium Silver and Celeron processors SKUs designed on Intel 10 nanometer Jasper Lake architecture. The company claims this ship to deliver up to 35% better application performance along with up to huge 78% lift in graphics versus its previous generation. The new platform will also reportedly bring Intel Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, 4K media support and enhanced camera interface for better collaboration and a remote learning experience. So yes, definitely some good news, but I was expecting a little bit more from Intel, maybe get a little bit more cores, but because they're still stuck on the 14 nanometer technological process and they don't have ability to actually switch completely to the 10 nanometer, they're stuck to the amount of cores they can put on the processor. And this is limiting them because if they put more cores, they're gonna be closer to each other. This means that when they're gonna be using that turbo boost to raise the clock speed to like five gigahertz, it's gonna heat up like an oven. They wanna try and avoid that. That's why they're tweaking their architecture and their IPC. This way bringing a better performance per core instead of having more cores on one chip. But having AMD keynote speech tomorrow, we're gonna see what they're gonna say about their mobile processors. Hopefully they're gonna bring way more this year and more manufacturers gonna be implementing their CPUs into their laptops. So there is more diversity on the laptop market. And of course, hopefully they're gonna be able to manufacture more processors because nowadays with all of their new 5000 series processors, it's virtually impossible to buy because they're so scarce and there's not many produced. And as soon as they get produced, they just get bought out right away. So it's very hard to get one, but we'll see what's gonna be in this year. Hopefully it's not gonna be the same story for the mobile processors. If they're gonna be announcing them tomorrow, it won't be taking long. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay tuned. And tomorrow I'll do my best to cover for the AMD keynote speech. If you like this video, don't forget to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much for your support. Bye-bye.